Hey everybody, welcome to Mid-Rock Crisis. I'm East Coast Pete. Today we're going to talk about Stone Temple Pilots. I bet you there's plenty of people out there who know a lot more about this band than I do. Also known as STP, Pilots formed in 1989 just in time for the Seattle grunge scene with which they were erroneously associated. Scott Whelan on vocals, Dean DeLeo on guitar and bass, and Eric Kretz on drums. He began as Mighty Joe Young. After the giant gorilla movie from 1949, if you've ever seen that, it's not to be confused with the Chicago bluesmen also named Mighty Joe Young. But they changed their name to STP upon signing with Atlantic. The first album, Core, was released in 1992 and it was a big success. STP formed in San Diego. Scott Whelan met Robert DeLeo and at a Black Flag concert in Long Beach, California in 1985. They talked about their friends and found out they were dating the same girl. They broke off with the girl and held on to each other. And Scott said this story is not true. That he had pursued Robert after seeing him play with his band Soy Desant. I'm gonna go with the version two. It seems more likely. Eric Kretz joined the same way with another band. Guitarist Corey Hickok left in 1989 and Robert suggested his older brother Dean as a replacement. At that time, Scott's band was called swing and Dean had given up a career in music. He had a good job but continued to play as a hobby. He told Scott he'd play but they had to change the swing name and skip the yodeling. Mighty Joe Young was set loose on these California club scenes. They supported Henry Rollins at the Whiskey and began work on an album. Meanwhile, Mighty Joe Young, the blues man, had a lawyer inform them that the name was taken. STP was chosen because they liked the gas additive logo. They tried to think of words that coincided and came up with Shirley Temple's Pussy. Hardy Har. They were young. The Stereo Temple Pilots became the Stone Temple Pilots. In 1992, the album Core It's named for Adam and Eve's Apple. Here's the songs. One dead and bloated. Sounds like grunge spirit. Two, sex type thing, more heavy metal than grunge, but no noodles. Three, Wicked Garden, really, really strong first album. Four, No Memory, it's an instrumental, moody acoustic guitar, jazz, bass. Number five, Sin. STP would have made it without Seattle and the whole grunge scene, if you ask me. Six, Naked Sunday. Hmm. I'm going to call this the first clinker. Don't know if you agree with me. And seven, Creep. That's not the Radiohead song. Okay, this one does sound like Kurt Cobain a little. I'm half the man I used to be. You know, that one. Eight, P. 
piece of pie. Not the best track, and the noodles are out and in force. If you don't know what noodles are, stick around. Nine plush. I thought this was by Pearl Jam. Feeling? Master plan? Ten. Wet my bed. This one's a tosser, a stoner stream of unconsciousness. 11, Cracker Man, not the best track either. 12, Where the River Goes, disappointing end to a fine first effort. The band sought to revive the AOR approach, that's album-oriented rock, from the 70s theme is confusion, abuse of power, anti-women as sex objects, and organized religion. Not seeing people as equals. The critics felt that STP was ripping off Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains. I do see a similarity, especially if you like this music. Hard to critically analyze the lyrics after one hearing, however. Anyway, there was plenty of room at the top. STP opened for Rage Against the Machine and Megadeth. Fans flocked to them and bought their album regardless of what critics said, which is usually the case, isn't it? Second album, Purple, was finished in less than a month. The album debuted at number one in the U.S. in 1984. Interstate Love Song and Vaseline helped. Helped them, I mean the band, STP, to triple platinum. Yikes! Here's the songs on Purple. One, Meat Plow. I got a lover and she shows me how to understand. Number two, Vaseline. This album's plush. Each STP album has one tactile title. Three, Lounge Fly. Four, Interstate Love Song. First pure STP popular radio song. Five, Still Remains. Six, Pretty Penny. Very cool acoustic. Doesn't even sound like Scott. Is it, is it Scott or maybe somebody else? I don't know. Seven, Silver Gun Superman. Eight, Big Empty. This is STP's San Tropez. Like the song from Pink Floyd's Metal. Nine, Unglued. And maybe five out of ten. 10, Army Ants, 6 out of 10, and 11, Kitchenware and Candy Bars. This is a hidden track, and it's a parody. Now, if grunge is merely punk plus metal, I don't see these guys as that. How about the Lumberback Shirts? with the torn elbows. Nope. Okay, then how about the angst? I'm not really finding that yet. Maybe in the next album. Let's check for self-doubt, abuse, neglect, betrayal, social and emotional isolation, psychological trauma, and desire from freedom as well. Is this a grunge band? What if I said that Waylon DeLia were the best songwriting team since Lennon and McCartney? How about that? In 1995, STP rented a mansion in Santa Barbara. The band lived together while they created their third album, which would be Tiny Music, dot, dot, dot. Songs from the Vatican gift shop. This album 
was not another grungy step forward. It was a full-fledged glam psychedelic outing. Rolling Stone magazine, which hated STP, now loved them. Wayland loved heroin. He would take time off after a short tour for Tiny Music to go to rehab. He got well enough to release a solo album, 12 Bar Blues, in 1998. Here's Tiny Music. One, press play. It's an instrumental, odd and funky. Two, Pops Love Suicide. Scott's gone. Oh, uh-oh. Three, Tumble in the Rough. This doesn't sound like SDP. Four, Big Bang, baby. It's like the bridge. Five, Lady Picture Show, pleasant but not dark. What happened? Six, and so I know. I bet fans were confused with this tour. Seven, tripping on a hole in a paper heart. It's kind of a semi-hard rock song. Eight, art school girl. Nine, adhesive. This is the tactile number I was telling you about. Ten, ride the cliche. Eleven, daisy, another instrumental. And twelve, seven cage tire. I'm sorry, Seven Cage Tiger. I just wanted to skip ahead real quick and tell you how much I love the guitars in this band. Wow. Well, before Tiny Music, Scott got busted for possession. His sentence was probation. No more butterflies bloke it on wheels, guys. Remember that from the Stones? That was a big headline when they got busted in the Brit papers. Butterflies Broken on Wheels. Waylon formed a side band, The Magnificent Bastards, who recorded songs for the sci-fi film Tank Girl. At the same time, STP put out an album without Scott. Some of the songs they came up with would be saved for a side project called Talk Show. Other songs appeared on tiny music. The point of all this is that the band was already getting tired of their singer's drug abuse as far back as 1995. Tiny music was described by the band as an experiment into shoegaze and jangle pop. Waylon brought in an influence of glam and punk from the 70s. Dean DeLeo contribution was an influence of the 60s and 70s rock. Robert DeLeo brought in jazz and bossa nova. There was no trace of Seattle sound influences. They'd rather moved away from that or were never really in it beyond what the music business said what they were. Even the sleeve art was made to resemble a 70s album. The next album would be a return to Formula One in 1998. The fourth album, number four, return to core values. A more contemporary metal sound, maybe. The tour for number four with the Red Hot Chili Peppers Another alt-metal band cemented the description. Sour Girl was the single, and it went to number 78. Here's some more of these songs. One, Down, Scott's Back. And it's a good thing, because I like this. I like the star on the sleeve, too. It's cool. Two, Heaven and Hot Rods. Giving this a 6 out of 10. But I added a point because Scott's back. Three, Pruno, five out of ten. That means so-so. Four, Church on Tuesday, six out of ten. And five, Sour Girl. Very pop, 
very nice. Seven out of ten. Six, no way out. Seven, sex and violence. Eight, glide. Tactile number. Nine, I got you. Ten, MC5. And eleven, Atlanta. Did you hear Mary Poppins? Just for a second? Is that even possible? Next album, Shangri La Di Da. Released in 2001. It's originally a double LP and a tribute to Andrew Wood of Mother Love Bone. But he OD'd and died of heroin in 1990, but Atlantic didn't go for the double album benefit idea, so they put out first song Dumb Love, hard, harsh testosterone-laden song. Two, Days of the Week, back at it. Just real good rock, they still got it. Three, Coma, no letting up. Proggy middle eight, prog, tactile. Three, Hollywood bitch. I guess you had to be there. I guess maybe you were. Five, wonderful, this is the acoustic break. Six, black again. This is glorious sadness. Seven, hello, it's late. Gentle, pure, clean, real. Not hard rock or grunge. Eight, too cool queenie. It's a karma song. Is it about Courtney? Nine, regeneration. Anthemic. And then 10, Bipolar Bear is amazing. Oh. 11, Transmissions from a Lonely Room. 12, A Song for Sleeping. It's almost a country song. It's like family music. Try something a little different there. And 13, Long Way Home. It's a great one to end it on. What a nice album. Thank you so much. Then after the 2002, Waylon and Dean DeLeo had a falling out. Oops. STP could not continue. Waylon was on a course of self-destruction and DeLeo didn't want to go down with him. It's as simple as that. Waylon would join members of Guns N' Roses to form the supergroup Velvet Revolver. And they put out two albums, Contrabad and Libertan. 04 and 07, respectively. Meanwhile, the DeLeos formed their own supergroup, Army of Anyone, with vocals by Rich Patrick of the industrial rock band Filter. One album went out in 2006. Electric 2 was drumming for the spinal spiral arms. Not sure what I mean by that think about it. But in 2007, Scott Whelan's wife invited the DeLeos to play at a beach party. This led to a reconciliation with Scott Whelan, left Vol Velvet Revolver in 2008, and the DeLeos announced a 65-date North American tour of STP. They also toured Southeast Asia for the first time and, and Australia. A concert film, Alive in the Windy City, was released. But there was a rumor that Wayland was going back to Velvet Revolver, substantiated by Slash. Two months later, Wayland was fired from STP. Chester Bennington of Lincoln Park replaced him. The EP High Rise was released with the new frontman. Scott Wayland was found dead of an accidental overdose of alcohol, pills, and coke on his tour bus in Minnesota. Jeff Gutt was chosen as STP's new singer. The second self-titled album went out in 2018.
going back to 2010, Paisley STP. I don't like this album or the sleeve art. One, between the lines, even when we used to take drugs, two, take a load off, cliche, like the chorus, three, huckle, huckleberry crumble, rat trap bed bugs, four, hickory dichotomy, STP Lou Reed, STP Bowie, STP Southern Rock, five, dare if you dare, Pinocchio, so Disney, STP Disney, <laughs> six, cinnamon, tactile song, not hot, not dry, kind of teeny bopper, seven, hazy days, STP Ario Speedwagon, eight, Bagman, STP Prince, Pac-Man's Bunny, Nine, Peacoat. I, I like this song because I, I, would re I, I would like to go buy a Peacoat this winter and wear it because I think that's a cool look. Ten, Fast As I Can. Fiona Apple meets Molly Hatchet. Eleven, First Kiss on Mars. STP Roxy Music. Twelve, Maver. Piano swaying, low point on a bad album. What a letdown. Almost all the songs are contrived verse, melodic chorus, follow a formula. Not too creative, guys. STP 2018. Chester Bennington ODs and dies in 2017. Here are the songs. One, Middle of Nowhere, giving it a 6 out of 10. Two, Guilty, that's a 5 out of 10. Three, Meadow, tactile, kind of like a soprano's daughter, the one who lived, 5 out of 10. Four, Just a Little Lie, 6 out of 10. Five, six, eight, also 6 out of 10. Six, Thought She'd Be Mine, Acoustic Yawn. 4 out of 10. And then 7, Roll Me Under. 8 out of 10. Very nice. But stick to this stuff, please. 9, The Art of Letting Go. Not going to go here. Not going to go here. 3 out of 10. 10, Finest Hour. 2 out of 10. 11, Good Shoes. Extra point for the drumming, which I happen to like on this song. 5 out of 10. 12, Reds and Blues. 4 out of 10. Now this is not SP, STP. It's, it's all over. It's done. 40 million sold. 17.5 million in the U.S. Number 40 on VH1's 100 Greatest of All Times. Will critics ever learn? No, they won't. Will record labels learn? No. Will fans? Yes, fans will learn. It's about the fannies in the seats after all. Simple as that. Oh, and leaving 